Um, okay, up next we have, uh, and last for this session, we have automating DL compiler bug finding with NN Smith. And with us today is Jawe Liu, and he is a second year PhD student in UIUC. His primary research goal is to make infrastructure software easy to use, fast, and reliable. He is generally interested in performance, reliability, and programmability in computer systems, especially ML systems. Specifically, his ongoing research improves the reliability and robustness of machine learning systems using automatically synthesized DNNs as test cases. So thanks, Jawe. Excited to hear more about this. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Jawe Liu. I'm a second year PhD student um, from UAC. Um, today, I'm excited to talk about our recent work on how to automate deep learning compiler testing and bug finding with NSMIS. And this, uh, this work is actually a collaboration with multiple institutions, including Columbia, uh, NEU, Nanjing University, New York University, and UAC. So with the recent advance of compilation technologies, deep learning compilers are being widely used to improve the performance of deep learning. While the compiler brings us systematic performance improvement, it is challenging to ensure its correctness. As a result, developers wrote a lot of test cases where typically given a model and its computational input, we check if the compiled model can return expected results. Because crafting a huge test suite is expensive, in this work, we aim to automate the process by performing automatic test case generation. To address this challenge, we built a tool called NSMIS, and in this talk, we will briefly cover two papers in this project and show how we made it. So to generate a high quality test case, we need to ensure the well formedness. This means that we want to only generate valid models. For example, if your model has a pooling operator whose kernel size is larger than the input, oftentimes it will be rejected by the parser. As a result, such a model cannot test the other deeper components of the compiler. The way we generate valid model structures is to incrementally insert an operator to an already valid model to perform such validity preserving insertion for each operator, we define its input constraints, basically predicates over input, uh, input shape dimension and operator attributes. To illustrate for a pulling 2D operator, we have four symbols as input shape and a group of attributes for specifying its detailed, detailed semantics. With this, we can construct corresponding constraints. Uh, for example, the current size must be positive and no larger than the padded input size. Specifically, we can actually write this specification in Python code, um, and we use a require class method to describe how to make such predicates. One more question is, how do we get the input dimensions to the requires function? Um, there's actually no magic. We also need to specify how to transfer input dimensions to output dimensions, where we call such a function is a type transfer function. So with these specifications, we can insert an operator in a validity preserving manner. So what do we do first is to first randomly select an operator type, say a NAT node, and then we let the, we let the type and the ranking compatible output tensors to be the candidates to its input. And then we do constraint solving over randomly selected uh, candidates. We insert the operator if set, otherwise we reduce the steps. We can also do backward insertion in, in which, uh, which will be detailed in the paper. Sorry. Um, so next we'll be talking about how to generate well-formed inputs. So to achieve the well-formedness of the inputs, we want to avoid not numbers and infinities during the model's computation, which is uh, very common for randomly generated models. Um, this is because the, computing, uh, the computation over floating point exception values are oftentimes undefined behaviors uh, for example, the consequence of casting not a numbers to integer types is undefined behavior, which brings us false parties when doing differential testing. Meanwhile, not a numbers and infinities easily get broadcasted to the output when computing a model, which makes the model's output trivially equal that might not manifest an actual semantic bug. So where are these not a numbers and infinities come from? They actually come from operators with limited input domains, such as arc sign and log. So if you are using negative inputs over the log, you will get a not number. 
And we call this kind of operators as vulnerable operators. The way we mitigate this problem is to do a kind of retrain the model with some guidance. So the first step is that if we detect a vulnerable operator and its output is, uh, has uh, not numbers and infinities, we can come up with a loss function that penalizes the out of, out of the main inputs um, to, the, uh, to the operator. And then we just apply the loss function and do gradient descent to up to the weights and inputs so that the input to these uh, vulnerable operators uh, will uh, move forward to the uh, desired domain. Um, there are also like other challenges, including that uh, some operators could be non-differentiable and it could have like zero gradient regions. And we, in our paper, we uh, use proxy gradients to mimic the infinite, and it will be detailed in the paper. Um, we showed that with this technique, 98% of the models can find valid inputs with a very negligible overhead, where if we only do like default initialization, like many, 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 many operators, uh, many, many models um, which randomly generated would lead to um, invalid computation. And we also show that uh, imputability becomes more serious problem um, when we have larger sized uh, single size model. So next we'll talk, uh, cover another um, preliminary work, which is how to automate the generation of operator rules. So the new problem we are facing is that we want to, um, we want to being able to cover more operator types when we are generating random models. And in the first year of development of NSMAs, we only manually encoded around 60 operators rules. But actually, there are up to hundreds or even thousands of um, operators that are supported by the deep learning compilers and the libraries. So the research question we are trying to ask is, can we automatically synthesize operator rules or specifications as well so that we don't have to manually encode them? So the way we try to resolve this problem is that we want to do inductive program synthesis. And our observation is that we find the most input and shape constraints can be described by simple arithmetic grammar. And the way we do it uh, as a typical inductive synthesis framework is that we first collect input output pairs for the input or shape uh, constraints. This can be done by, let's say, instrumenting the input output shapes uh, by running some CI tests. And then we enumerate the grammar um, for, um, for, let's say, um, shape, tra shape uh, transfer function or input constraints until we find an expression that can match all these input output pairs. And then we can apply these synthesized uh, rules and specifications to Ernest Smith and to enlarge its search space. So to, um, more specifically, the way we do it is to, we first run instrumentation over CI tests or any other um, code that are running deep learning libraries or compilers. And we trace the tensor APIs to get their uh, invocation records. And then we do some filtering, simplification, and augmentation, getting, eventually getting um, um, a rich set of invocation records for each operators. What we do next is we run the rule synthesis engine, and then we come up with the uh, rules. And to accelerate that, we, uh, we apply a lot of uh, automation techniques, including pruning, rule reusing, and the deduplication. With that, we'll offload the, the graph generation to the to uh, the Ernst Smith engine and then do differential testing to find bugs. So next we will show some of the result highlights. So in terms of bug finding, um, in the first batch of bugs we found, which is from the initial Ernst Smith project, we found uh, 72 new bugs uh, over three mainstream um, mainstream defending compilers, including TVM, Onyx Runtime, and TensorRT. And we found that 70%, we found that 24% of them are actually semantic bugs. And 43 bugs are caused by wrong implementation of pulses. And then in the next uh, project, uh, when we um, allowed NSMIS to, um, to generate more diverse graph, we even found more bugs um, over the compilers that are being used in TensorFlow uh, and PyTorch. And we found that uh, uh, 34% 30, of them are actually semantic bugs. And even eight of them are marked as high priority bugs in PyTorch. 
And the PyTorch leading developer, one of the PyTorch leading developers says that the bugs we found are high quality and can be cropped and the and it can be pra practical um, in, in real in real cases. And we have the concrete uh, bug report list um, linked in the link below. In terms, we also evaluated our systems and tools um, by, in terms of their branch coverage. So the way we do it is we first the deep learning compiles for four hours for um, over the CPU targets for each deep learning cluster. So with the with the original NSMEs, we can improve the SOTA by up to 80%. And if we can um, allow more large, a larger input space to NSMEs, NSMEs can be even improved by up to 51%. Through some ablation study, we also found that generating graphs, which has at most five operators, could be a trade-off in terms of uh, coverage and the debuggability. So that's all about NSMIS. So NSMIS is basically looking at how to, how to perform well formless oriented test case generation for deep learning compilers. And we have been finding over hundreds of bugs in the real world. And our tool is available on GitHub and PyPy and feel free to use it to test your own deep learning compiler. Thanks. That's all of the presentation. Thanks for sharing your results with uh, NN Smith. I, it's really impressive how many high quality and high value bugs it is already uncovered. Um, and we have a question from Masa. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any experience on MLIR based projects? Um, so, in terms of, uh, oh, so I personally don't have much. Uh, personal experience on MLR project, although I basically I'm familiar with like LLM, LLVM stack. Um, so I think you're um, asking if we can integrate these tools to um, MLR oriented projects. Um, the answer is yes, because primarily in our implementation, we generate models uh, whose format are TensorFlow or PyTorch, and there are tools to um, convert such models into, let's say, um, LML IR stack. Yeah. Right. So it, it it's a uh, plugs in on the front end. Yes. So, okay, cool. Um, well, thanks so much.